Hello and welcome from my home to yours. Our world can feel like a chaotic place, so we need each other and we need God even more than usual. I'm grateful that you are choosing to engage with Union Church in this unique way in these difficult times. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Worship offers us a template for life, so let us begin with prayer. God of light and life, we gather as witnesses to your abundant love. We are amazed to discover you anew through our prayers, our praise, and our offerings. God, you encourage us amidst our daily living to become stewards of your love and grace. We ask you to be here with us as we witness your love made real through Jesus the Christ. Amen. God of the morning is with us as we gather with songs of praise. Here we find respite from a busy, frenetic world. We gather in this place, finding the peace that God offers. When we find our rest in Christ, we find ourselves. We are witnesses to God's glory, steadfast love, and faithfulness. We see the beauty of creation and sing praises of joy. We abide in God's love and keep God's commandments. Today, let us awaken to the call and show up fully to love one another. Trusting that confession is good for the soul, let us pray. God, we are often busy. We get caught in the flow of hectic pace too quickly. Give us opportunities to be still and know you. God, forgive us when we become so busy we forget to pray or take notice of our neighbors. Forgive us when we are so saturated by the news that we shut down completely. We forget that we are called to be your servants, your witnesses here and now. Wake us up to the work of love at hand. Amen. Hear these affirming words. God knows our hearts when we gather and ask for forgiveness. God forgives. Friends, be at peace. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We have invented a number of things to help us see 
magnifying glasses and microscopes to see things that are small, binoculars and telescopes to see things far away. These are things that help us witness what is going on in the world around us. Our senses help us do that too. I hear the rain falling on the roof. I hear the birds singing, the, the geese quacking. Um, it, it, you feel things with your hands or just the touch of the sun on your skin. You can taste the, the delicious uh, chocolate or Italian dish that you're eating and if you add to that your heart and mind and intuition that expands what we are witness to last week the um, lectionary scripture was about doubting Thomas who needed to see Jesus in order to know that he was resurrected um, this week, we are called to be witnesses to that resurrection, that new life. And we are, um, we, we should be looking all around us all the time and looking not only with our eyes, but our hearts and spirits to see God at work, God still speaking in our world. And see the resurrected Christ. So please pray with me, repeating after me. We give thanks to you, O oh God, as you continue to speak and act in our lives and through our actions. Thanks be to God. Amen. And be sure to look online for activities that will help you be uh, witnesses to God and Christ's resurrection. Today's focus scripture comes from the gospel according to Luke chapter 24, 36b through 48. Jesus stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands, my feet, see it as I myself, touch me and see me. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And having said this, Jesus showed them the hands and the feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, Jesus said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave Jesus a piece of broiled fish and Jesus took it and ate in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. The Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the Messiah's name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends the reading. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. These are not words easily comprehended when you are terrified. On that first Easter day, the disciples arrived in Emmaus, about a seven mile journey from Jerusalem, with a stranger they encountered on the road. They invited him to eat with them, at which time Jesus said, Peace be with you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a ghost. Most of us have experienced deep grief. We watch the door, waiting for our beloved to walk through, or upon discovering their lunch left behind, consider taking it to them. 
This is a natural part of grief that causes us to feel a bit out of control our sen of our senses and even half crazy. The disciples must have been reeling with grief on this day, the same day they had found the empty tomb. Retelling to their story to the stranger for the first time may have even re-traumatized re them as well. Look at my hands and my feet, Jesus said to the gobsmacked disciples. You aren't seeing a vision or losing your minds. According to commentators, it's likely that during the time Luke wrote his gospel, 70 to 80 years after the resurrection, people were questioning whether the disciples saw a ghost or maybe had some sort of vision. Those conversations continue today too. Perhaps, however, we are missing Luke's point. What if we step back from the intense emotion of that moment and focus on the actions of the story? Perhaps we can see what Luke was hoping to tell us. Having an encounter with God, hearing words of hope, eating together, and being sent into the world are essential parts of our worship life together, even essential to ordinary everyday life. Peace be with you are words we need to hear over and over again. Peace be with you are words to quiet, conflicted, and traumatized souls as police violence against citizens of color have us reeling again with profound grief that renders us half crazy with feelings of being out of control and helpless. To acknowledge our collective trauma over the past year plus, even over the previous four years, we can relate to the loss of control experienced by the disciples when they saw the empty tomb and then encountered Jesus dining with them. Like the disciples, we aren't losing our minds. We're trying to come to terms with new realities, perhaps a new order to life. We're living in the midst, in the very midst of profound social change. This is painful, challenging, and chaotic. Peace be with you, Jesus says to us all. That first Easter day, the disciples were being confronted with a new way to live without Jesus. Encounter, share the word, eat together, and send. The familiar daily activities, they took on holiness, sacredness, and new immediacy because this is what they had done during their final encounter with the risen Christ. They had had this mysterious encounter with God who let them be witness to life after death. Whether this is literally true or metaphorically true probably doesn't matter that much. What matters is that God knows what it means to be human and therefore what God needs of us in co-creating this new reality. Jesus told them, you are witnesses of repentance and forgiveness of sins to be proclaimed in the Messiah's name to all nations. In other words, your minds and your eyes have been opened to God's answer to death. Now go give testimony about what we have witnessed. Go tell the story to everyone you encounter, everywhere, for everyone. Death does not have the last word. Love wins. Though we may feel out of control by the pain of social changes happening all around us and to us, God is ultimately in control of capital L love. Because we've been witness to it from Jesus' ministry through his transformation as the risen Christ. When we gather with just two or three to share God's love, whether in person or virtually, we are worshiping. 
As I say in my opening words each day, <clears throat> worship is a template for our lives. Encountering God, sharing a word of hope, eating together, and being sent by God out into the world as witnesses to God's life-changing love. I've been studying, discussing, discerning with colleagues and our own worship staff and wondering what church will look like when we come together for in-person worship. There is agreement that our online present is a, presence is a crucial part of being church in today's world. What must we continue to do in worship? Have an encounter with God through music and prayer. Hear the word of God through music and sermon. Share food and fellowship together and be sent into the world with courage and trust in God's transformational presence to build God's kingdom on earth. Priest and author Anthony DeMello wrote this one minute wisdom, quote, calamities can bring forth growth and enlightenment, said the teacher. And he explained it thus, each day a bird would shelter in the withered branches of a tree that stood in the middle of a vast deserted plain. One day a whirlwind uprooted the tree, forcing the poor bird to fly a hundred miles in search of shelter till it finally came to a forest of fruit laden trees. And he concluded, if the withered tree had survived, nothing would have induced the bird to give up the security and fly." End quote. Peace be with you. Thanks be to God.
instruments of your peace. As we do each week, let us hold each other and the world in prayer. God, we give thanks for your steadfast love, abiding presence, and your creative counsel and guideposts along the way. You enrich our lives with a world filled with colors and scents and tastes that delight our senses. And we say together, God, in your love, hear our prayer. We see the goodness that surrounds us and give you thanks and praise. We are witnesses to the world in which we live, and we see injustices and colossal failures. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Sometimes we wish we could unsee some of what we've witnessed. Witnessing has its own form of pain but the true suffering we see is incomprehensible. God, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray for those in daily pain whose bodies and spirits require great effort. We pray for those who are hungry for food, encouragement, relationship. We pray for those whose spirits are diminished. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Holy One, shine the light of your infinite and healing love on our friends and family and those in our faith community whom we hold close to our hearts. Shine the light of your love on the families of victims of gun violence, on people of color around the world traumatized by oppressive and violent racism, on people experiencing homelessness and housing insecurity, on the families of victims of COVID and those who have recovered, on Dave and Lori recovering at home from COVID, on Chris in hospice care at home, on Peggy receiving treatment for cancer, on Michael and Beverly grieving the death of a nephew, on Dolores' mother who suffered a stroke, on Lola, Shirley, Faye, Bill, Lance, Dawn, Barbara, Betty Jean, and all those we hold dear. Assured that God knows the pain and struggles of our humanness, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught in the way we know it or as shown here. Our Creator who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. May you see God's face in those you meet. Be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. And know the love and power of spirit today and every day. Amen. I want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you again for the many ways that you support the ministry of Union Church. If you would like to donate, please go to the website and look for the donate button near the bottom of the homepage. Blessings. See you next time. <laughs>